The Dumbbells, Soldiers of Song, presented as part of the Virtual Remembrance Day event 2020 by the Aurelia Public Library. Muddy, bloody, and battle-weary, soldiers looked for relief from the horrors of the trenches whenever they could. Music and laughter was so essential to building morale that Major General Lipset of the 3rd Division approved the formation of a troop of entertainers drawn directly from the trenches. Taking their name from the insignia of the 3rd Division and led by Aurelia's Captain Merton Plunkett, the dumbbells performed right on the front lines as soldiers continued to carry stretchers and dodge bullets. Their performances included comedy skits, female impersonators, and renditions of the latest popular hit songs, as well as original music. The Dumbbells went on to play shows in London's West End and after the war at the Ambassador Theatre on Broadway and continued to entertain into the 1930s. Leader Merton Plunkett eventually retired to Collingwood, where he continued to be involved in entertainment. Our history, our heritage, our county. Within weeks of Aurelia's soldiers shipping off to England with the Simcoe Foresters in mid-1916, controversy arose. The local shopkeepers, upon finding out the Canadians were paid twice what their British boys were paid, promptly doubled the prices for everything they sold the Canadians. Coffee, chocolate, newspapers, souvenirs, everything. The men turned to their YMCA captain, Merton Plunkett, an Aurelia boy, to see if the Y could stock what they wanted in the YMCA canteen on base. Plunkett made an appeal to the townspeople of Aurelia, explaining the dilemma. Helen Clark, a Y volunteer and wife of the head of Aurelia's war recruiting committee, George Clark, took up the call. She started the Merton Plunkett Fund to raise funds so that Plunkett could supply their boys heading for the trenches. In a town already heavily donating to the war effort through war bonds, the YMCA and the Red Cross, Helen Clark managed to secure at least $100 per week for the duration of the war. That's almost $1,500 per week in today's money. Every week, the packet published the names of the donors with heartfelt stories of why the donations were made. Merton Plunkett soon had far more than he needed to stock the canteen, so he started hosting Aurelia Days, gatherings of all Aurelia boys for a banquet, music, and camaraderie. These weekly affairs quickly became extremely popular. Then, late in 1916, after crossing the Channel to France, the men of the Simcoe Foresters began to be shipped out in dribs and drabs as replacements for devastated British battalions. The Aurelia boys became scattered all along the front lines. Plunkett followed his men to France, establishing frontline canteens, running the YMCA morale-boosting programs, and, most importantly, spreading his personal goodwill. Merton was very popular with the soldiers wherever he went. He was a music man. He joked and sang and had men lug his little piano all along the front where he hosted impromptu entertainments, inviting the soldiers themselves to get up and tell a joke or sing a song. And still, every Friday, Merton continued hosting his Aurelia days. The money from Mrs. Clark was still flowing into him, and he did what he could for the Aurelia boys. Hometown soldiers from miles along the line would gather at Merton's announced location for food and good cheer, sometimes several hundred of them. In a thank you letter from Merton to Mrs. Clark in 1916, the writer talks of the 40th Battery arriving with more Aurelia boys. The entire group had a splendid supper, and after sing-songs, they went to the big tent 
and they gave them an hour of good old Aurelia songs and yells. About 1,000 boys enjoyed them. He said how much he appreciated all that was being done for the boys, and that he could not explain properly how much it meant to them. Letters from grateful Aurelia soldiers came pouring in and were published in the packet thanking the town, and specifically Mrs. Clark, for the appreciated efforts on their behalf. One letter was from Lieutenant McCorkle, who wrote, I have the honor to write you a few lines expressing the appreciation of the Aurelia boys for the magnificent dinner which was held somewhere in France. There were about 85 old Aurelians present. There were plenty of good things to eat, and believe me, they were thoroughly enjoyed by all. On these occasions, the old boys gather in and recall the old times, old scenes, old friends. You could see in the happy faces of those present how glad they were to see each other. If you could have been present to see their smiling faces and to join with them in the evening's amusement, you would feel simply repaid for your good work. As far as I can learn, Aurelia is the only town that is following up her boys in this manner. By mid-1917, when the officers in charge of the troops decided that small-scale concert parties should be expanded in a big way, they turned to Merton to do it. He recruited about a dozen talented soldiers, the men he remembered from his social gatherings all along the line, into his YMCA troop, now detailed as actors and singers. They worked up a vaudeville show of jokes and skits, mostly poking fun at army life with music and sing-alongs. The shows, staged all along the line on packing box stages, were wildly popular with the men. Thus, the dumbbells were born. They got their name from the dumbbell patch on the sleeves of the 3rd Canadian Division. The shows boosted the morale of the soldiers, who really enjoyed that some of the performers dressed up in women's clothing. Sometimes it was hard to tell if they were men or women. The Dumbbells entertained soldiers of the trenches from 1917 until the end of the First World War in late 1918. Of all the Canadian concert parties held for the troops, the Dumbbells were the most popular. All the members were regular soldiers, with Ross Hamilton, a female impersonator, Jack Eyre, who played the piano, and Corporal Al Plunkett, who was Merton's brother. Merton requested Al for the group, in order to get him out of the trenches. They had a popular theme song called Dumbbell Rag. As their popularity grew, the members were taken out of their military units and attached as an official band. The job was to raise morale wherever soldiers were, either in the trenches or on the front lines. The Dumbbells were the first large-scale entertainment troupe to ever perform right at the front lines of any war. Often shellfire interrupted shows, and on occasion, the actors were commandeered to carry wounded soldiers on stretchers to first aid stations. By the summer of 1918, Merton had organized and outfitted 18 different troops, all paid for by the Canadian YMCA. After the war, the Dumbbells chose to continue their performances outside of the army and set off on their first Canadian national tour in 1919. They also performed at the Coliseum in West End, London, England, and as their popularity grew, they were booked for shows on Broadway in 1921 at the Ambassador Theatre in New York City. Plunkett managed the Civilian Dumbbells touring show in North America from 1919 to 1932. After the dumbbells folded in 1932, Merton Plunkett tried the insurance business, but in 1939, he became the overseas entertainment supervisor for the Canadian Legion's auxiliary services. A song that he wrote called We're On Our Way was sung by soldiers en route to Europe and became very popular in England. The Dumbbells became legendary in Canada as well as around the world. 
Plunkett's story is remarkable. But we must remember, if it were not for Mrs. Clark and her amazing fundraising efforts in the small town of Aurelia, none of this would likely have ever happened. Special thanks goes to David Town, who researched this story and shared it with all of us in Aurelia, giving us the opportunity to pay tribute and to remember these remarkable Aurelians. about my memory I don't want